Hello everyone and welcome to the print formatting lecture. In this lecture we're going to cover the various ways to format your print statements. As always there's a full Jupyter notebook that goes along everything we're going to cover. So we'll be covering the various formats of strings in Python 2 and Python 3. We'll also go over floating point number syntax. We'll look at some conversion format methods. We'll look at multiple formats and then we'll look at the string.format method which is probably the best way to use print formatting in Python. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with some live code. First thing we're gonna do is what we just covered in the string lecture, which is just a basic print statement. Again, remember, this is for Python 2. So I'm gonna say, this is a string. If you're using Python 3, this would be a print function, which we covered in the last lecture. Continuing on, let's say we had a variable that we wanted to insert into this string. So I'm going to make a variable called s, and it will be called string. And now what I want to do is place that string within another string, or really place that variable. So I'm going to say print place my variable here. And the syntax looks like this. It's going to be percentage sign s percentage sign parentheses, and then the object variable label. So if I click shift enter here, it's inserted that string variable into my other string. And I want you to notice here, I could have named this variable anything. So I could have said x here, and as long as it matches up x, it'll still work. What this s stands for is string. So what this is actually doing it's transforming whatever object you have in these parentheses in front of the percentage sign into a string so it can place it in the string. And because it's transforming it into a string, I can actually put in numbers here as well. And if I run this cell, you'll notice it still works. And it's the same with floating point numbers. So for instance, 13.13, .13, if I run it, it takes 13.13 .13 here as X and transforms it into a string that I can put and format into my string before I print it. Okay, so that's one method of putting your variables into your string. Let's go ahead and check another one that's more specific to floating point numbers. So I'm gonna say print floating point number colon, and the format's gonna look something like this. It's gonna have that same percentage sign but it's going to have two decimals of a, um, excuse me, two numbers of a decimal in between. So I'm going to say 1.2 and then an F for floating point number. And then we'll close off that string with a single quote. And here we'll pass in a floating point number. So let's say 13.145. All right, so let's take a look at what happens. So if you notice here, it got cut off to 13.14. So why is that? If we notice these two numbers here, the first number is the total minimum number of digits that this string should contain. And I'll make that clear in just a second by enlarging that number. But what we want to focus on right now is the number that comes after the decimal. So this placeholder number stands for how many numbers to show past that decimal point. So if I were to change this to three, it will show 145 when I run this cell. And likewise, if I change it to one, it will only show one number when I print that cell. Now, if I make it a very large number, such as 10, it's gonna fill in the rest of those numbers with zeros. So again, this number after the decimal point tells you or tells Python how many digits will I show past that decimal point if it's a floating point number? Let's go ahead and remain it with three, or have it stay with three. Now, this first number is the total minimum number of digits that the string should contain. At least that's the way you can think about it. So if I put one, nothing's gonna change. But let's say I put in a very large number, such as 25, and click enter. Notice how we fill in a bunch of white space. So since you're telling Python, I need this entire digit here to take up 25 essentially characters, 
it's going to fill in the characters that are not there with white space. So you can go ahead and just arbitrarily leave this as one if you're not really concerned about your print formatting for floating point numbers. If we hop back over to the Jupyter Notebook, I've put in quite a few examples for you to really get an idea of how this affects your print statements. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to conversion format methods, which we've actually already seen one. So these two methods will just convert any Python object into a string. So the first one that we have already seen is convert to string, and that's just that percentage sign s. And then what I will do is just pass in any uh, object, such as an integer, and it converts it into a string. The other formatting tool we can use is percentage sign %r, and it will actually do the same thing. But the difference between them is they use two separate methods. One uses something called str function, and the other one uses this um, repr function. So don't worry about those specific functions right now. We'll learn about them later on and how those two separate methods are different. But I just want you to be aware of R and S as print formatting options. Okay, so let's say you wanted to put in more than one variable into your string. How would you do that? Well, you can use multiple percentage signs. So I can say print, let's say first, percentage sign S, second, percentage sign s, and then third, percentage sign s, and then I will finally call a percentage sign, and here have parentheses. And what I'm going to do now is pass in objects in the order I want them to show up. And this is something um, that we're going to look into further in just a tiny second. So if I say hi as my first object, and I'll have this one say 2, and this one just pass in a number three, and I run that cell, what Python's gonna do is it's gonna take them in order. So this first percentage sign is gonna be assigned the first item in this, which is a tuple, which we actually learn about in later on. And then the second one takes in two in order, the third percentage sign S takes in three, converts it into a string, and then places it and formats it into your string. This is kind of a classic method that you see used a lot when you're reading other people's code. But the best Pythonic way to do this is using the string.format method. And I'll show you why. So let's say we wanted to print first, second, percentage sign s. Now, if I actually wanted the same object to go to both of them, I'd have to write it out twice, something like this, in order to make sure the code doesn't have any errors. But with the format method, it's actually a lot cleaner, and I'll show you why. So I can say print first, and I'm going to use curly brackets here, and I'm going to put in some arbitrary variable label, and you'll see why in just a second. And then I'm going to say second, and again, I actually will put in the same label. Close off my string immediately afterwards, put in a period, and call the format method on that string. And then I will pass in the variable x, which let's say I wanted it to be a string called inserted. And notice here, I only have to define this variable once for it to get inserted multiple times. And this sort of syntax is really powerful in case you want to mess around with the order. So let's make another variable here called y, which we'll call just uh, two exclamation point, so it's really clear where it is. And what I'm gonna do is now change this to third, put in second in the middle, curly brackets y, curly brackets. So notice the syntax here. I put in curly brackets and then the variable name. And then the dot format, I just define what each variable is. And now if I run this, you'll notice I get first, inserted, second, two, third, inserted. So this is really nice since I don't have to worry about everything being in the right order anymore. I just have to worry about the variables having the correct names when I call them. 
And this is really the way you should be um, print formatting as you go along throughout this course. It's the more Pythonic way of doing things. Okay, so that's the basics of string formatting. And just to remind you, Python 3 uses the print function, not the print statement. So I've already shown you how we can change that with an import method. So let's go ahead and bring it out here. So I'm going to say from, whoops, future, whoops, sorry, from future imports print function. And if I call that, now I can say print some string, hello, it prints. So this would be the case if you're using Python 3. Now again, I'm using Python 2 here, so I had to do this import statement. And we'll learn about import modules further on in the course, even though we already covered them a bit in the last lecture. All right, so what if I wanted to do the same formatting? It would be pretty much the same, just within the context of that function. So I would say 1 x dot format. Colon x inserts just some string so that it's really obvious. Close off my parentheses, make sure they all match. Enter, and there you have it. So this is what it would look like if you're using Python 3. Again, in case you're confused about print functions in Python 2 versus Python 3, make sure you go back and visit, visit the string lecture where we cover the differences between both of them. Okay. So let's do a quick overview of what we learned, and let's hop back over to the Jupyter Notebook. So in this lecture we covered print formatting. We saw how we can format with strings using the percentage sign s notation and syntax. Remember this percentage sign s will just format strings into your print statements by converting any object type into a string. We also saw the specific syntax for floating point numbers if we wanted to declare exactly how many numbers we wanted or how many characters we wanted, either after the decimal point or just in total. Remember, white space will be filled if you don't have enough characters in that floating point number. Then we looked at two conversion format methods, percentage sign %s and percentage sign %r, that actually convert any Python object into two separate methods. We looked at multiple formatting using this syntax. And then finally, we learned about the dot format method for strings, which allows us to just define variables. And here you can see more examples in the Jupyter Notebook about that. But what's nice about this is we only have to worry about calling the variable names inside these curly brackets instead of maintaining the order as we did in that previous percentage sign method. OK, so that's it as far as print formatting. Make sure you take your time throughout this lecture and go ahead and read the Jupyter Notebook if anything was not clear. All right, thank you very much, and I will see you at the next lecture.